Hi and welcome back for this final video, video four of a four part video series. So as promised in video three, this one is slightly off the wall, um, but do bear with me. And I'm gonna talk today about Dirty Dancing. Okay, so bear with me. I know it's the best film ever made. Uh, and I know some of you may be sat groaning at home, particularly the guys, but there's no point arguing with me because it is guaranteed, hands down, the best film ever made. And there is um, a reason behind this, which I'm going to get to in a second, but for those of you that don't know me, my name is Amanda Heath and I'm the creator of the Thriving Artists Business School. And what we've been doing over the last four videos is looking at blocks that prevent artists moving forward and becoming as successful as they can be. The first one was to do with mindset issues, fear and self-doubt and how we can overcome them. The second one is about finding your ideal customer and how spreading the net too wide doesn't work. It actually dilutes the message and stops you finding your ideal customer. Number three was about trying to be in too many places all at once and that leading to exhaustion and actually it's not a strategy that works. Instead, there are other things that you can do. So go back and watch video three if you haven't already seen it and the other two of course. But let's get to the important stuff, dirty dancing. <sighs> the reason I'm gonna talk about this today is Baby, the, the kind of main star in the film, if you like. For the, I'm, I'm sure there isn't a single person on earth who hasn't seen this film, but just in case, Baby goes on holiday with the family. It's a hideous name that, isn't it? Um, and she is kind of a little bit of a wallflower. She sits back and she watches, you know, everybody else take the limelight but she has a real love for dance and she watches the dancers in the show and she's like oh you can see it kind of having a little bit of a boogie but she doesn't have that confidence to step forward now this does resonate to artists so do go with me now in the film the dancers are just phenomenal and one day she goes to see them doing their own kind of dancing down in this basement and it is phenomenal they are unbelievably talented and you can just see she's watching them with complete awe but as I said she doesn't have the skills and she doesn't have the confidence so just kind of shies away. Second to the fact that she sees this completely gorgeous guy who um, she totally falls in love with and the rest of the world um, but that's by the by. Anyway what happens later in the film is the main dancer, the lead part, you know, can't do a show for, for reasons we won't go into. And so this hot guy, Patrick Swayze, basically recruits Baby to train to be the lead dancer. Now, the reason it resonates with us as artists is because quite often we can see exactly where we want to be. We look at this vision and we're like, oh, that's so, I'd love to be able to do that. That's exactly where I want to be but we don't feel like we're qualified to do it. We don't feel like we have the skill set or you know the confidence, any of those kind of things. So we step back and we stay on the sidelines. But instead of doing that, what Baby does is she trains with Patrick Swayze, you know, it's a hard job, but somebody's gotta do it. And she works hard every single day, blood, sweat, tears, there are moments, several moments, where she just wants to throw the towel in because it's too hard and where he gets frustrated with her because, you know, she's stamping all over his feet and things. But the point is she doesn't. She turns up every day, she trains, she does the work and eventually when they have this show, this finale, she goes on stage petrified like a rabbit in headlights, literally, you can see her shaking and, and white. And she goes on, she does the show, and she nails it. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but that's part of the beauty of the process. And the moment at the end where she does a lift on stage, the audience all go, um, sorry, that was my notes, <laughs> dropping to the floor with excitement, we wafting my hands around. But it's a beautiful moment, and she would never have got to that had she listened to the fear and self-doubt, had she not put in the work day in, day out to make it work and had she not been led by somebody that knew what they were doing. So effectively, what I'm saying is we can all stand on the sidelines and we can kind of make excuses or I don't have any dance training or I don't have the confidence or whatever it may be or we can say, okay, I can do that. 
If I put the work in and I, you know, follow the right path or the right roadmap and I deal with issues that come up along the way in terms of fear and self-doubt and all those kind of things, I can get to where I want to be. Now, if Baby or Jennifer, um, I can't remember a surname, but if she wouldn't have gone into that situation that literally terrified her and done the work, she would never have got to that end show. So as I said, a little bit of a kind of curveball there. Favourite film ever. I actually watched that whilst I was in labour with my second child and the midwife kind of kept getting in the way, but uh, <laughs> I love the film that much. Um, so yes, it's all about knowing where you want to be, recognising that yes, it's going to be scary, but what we want is on the other side of that discomfort and we're not going to get there unless we go through that discomfort and we learn the skills we need to learn, like how to photograph our work and how to speak to our ideal customers and how to kind of sell our work without being salesy. And also putting the work in in the studio, you know, day after day, showing up, painting or creating whatever your um, method is and recognising that some days it's just utter crap that we come out with, but that's not a reason to stop. We just keep going and keep pushing through those barriers. So I hope you've enjoyed these um, four videos. As I said, those are the main issues that come up when I work with artists um, in all different kind of mediums. And so I just thought that would be helpful for you in terms of some practical tips on how to move forward. And if you do want to join me in the Passion Into Profit program, then I would suggest, first of all, watching my masterclass, which is just over an hour. And it basically outlines the four steps that I have developed for artists specifically in order for them to build a profitable art business in the kind of smoothest, easiest way um, without all the overwhelm and the kind of stress because I've built two um, multiple six-figure businesses in the past. One of them was a product-based business selling actual products and the second one was a service-based business where I was actually teaching and employed other people to teach as well. So both of those types of businesses bring their different challenges and actually it, it always turns out that way, doesn't it? That skill set over the last 15 years have really helped me advise artists when they have come up against roadblocks in terms of teaching or workshops or wholesaling their artwork to retailers. I've been able to offer them some advice and guidance. And before setting up my own businesses, I worked for about five years um, writing business plans and assessing ideas from lots of academics, so hundreds in fact. So yes, probably over 20 years now, that makes me feel really old <laughs> of business experience. So hopefully I can pass some of that on to you guys and help you get to where you want to be just in the smoothest, most enjoyable way possible. So there'll be a link somewhere around this video for you to click and join and watch the masterclass. And if you like what you see in that four step framework, then by all means, I would love to have you on board with the Passion Into Profit program. There are a lot of P's in that sentence. I have to be careful. But for now, take care and I will see you soon.